Hi friends, I'm Olga Kirsch and welcome back to my studio. Today I prepared such a treat for you. We are going to paint a transparent lily. And I hope you as excited as me about painting another transparent flower. So let's start. I already prepared a sketch of Lily. You could find it in the attachments to the video. And I prepared uh, our colors. Windsor Red, um, Crop Lock, and a mixture of uh, permanent orange and yellow. And um, we will use all of them and maybe something else. So let's improvise. I will start to paint Lily with um, free bottom petals because usually Lily's structure is six petals, three on the bottom, three on the top. I'm watering the area of um, the top uh, of the bottom petal, which looks on the top, this one. And I go around the edges with my Windsor red color. I do not go to the center, so I'm not coloring here. I just go around and let my watercolor distribute and flow by itself. Maybe with some help of mine, I wash my brush, I dry my brush a little, and now I will make the vines and I paint the vines using just the color I already have on the petal. I just drag out the color and I move with my brush on the shape of the petal. So to make it easier, imagine that you have for example, an apple here or a ball, and you paint on the surface of the apple, on the top of the ball, on the top of the apple. That will make your lines this nicely curved. And lilies usually have this very certain main vine. So let's emphasize it a little bit. And this is in principle all. I would like, I dried my brush with a paper towel and I would like to remove some of the colors. I would like to keep our petals very, very transparent because we are painting Lily in a transparent technique and that's important to start very light. Same with the other petal. For example, I will take this left one. I'm watering the area. There will be a nice little curve here. I'm not touching this part right now. I just paint just the main area. And we are very lucky with painting lilies because um, three petals are not overlapping bottom petals are not overlapping so which means we no need for us to wait when one is dry we could start to paint right away and the same technique I go along the edge with my red color and I just let the red color distribute by itself I add a little bit more of um, crop lock just to the middle, uh, just to the center for some variety of colors. And same thing, I distribute the color from the center to the, to the edge of the petal with dry and clean brush. I do not have any, any color on my brush what I'm doing is just drag out the color 
from the colored area and distribute nicely to the whole petal. And that's how I create these wines. The only wine I use a little bit color to is the middle wine. It's very, very obvious, very certain in lilies. It's nice to show it on, on the painting. I It's nice when all these shapes are soft, um, very watercolorish. <laughs> uh, I hope you know <laughs> you know what I mean. And uh, we move into the next petal. It will look a little bit down. What in the area? Uh, it's very helpful if you water the area just with a small hint of um, color. For example, I already have something orange-red in my glass. And that helps me just to control to see the area which I'm watering much better. And I... Nothing new, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, nothing new. I go along the edges with the tip of my brush. Sometimes I apply a little bit more pressure to make the curves nice and interesting. I just go along the edge and just let my watercolors flow very naturally. And here <laughs> it's a little bit dry already doesn't matter. I wash my brush. I keep it a little bit wet, a little bit wet. And I go around this colored area and smooth the edges like this. I add some mixture of crop lock and Windsor red, Windsor red. To the middle, I wash my brush, I clean my brush, and I create the wines. I try to follow with my brush along the wines. And it's important that all the wines start at one point in the center of the flower, and they meet together again at one point at the very edge of, of a petal. And don't uh, paint wines like this straight. That's not what how we paint in it. It should be a nice curve. Imagine you uh, imagine you painting on the surface of an apple, for example, or a pear. I think pear is much more fitting to this this petal and the main wine, the main, the central wine of lily. I make it a little bit smooth in some areas, just like this. We will add more details here uh, later on. Right now, um, the only thing I would like to emphasize a little bit this edge. And now let me check if this is still wet, so it would be nice to wait until it dries. So our painting is dry, all, all the parts are dry, that's important, because we will paint with some overlaps and we need all the neighboring surfaces be very dry. But in principle, technique is the same. And as we are painting a transparent lily, we painting the we watering the area right here, right on the top of the previous petals, and that's why it was important to start first with the bottom three uh, petals. 
because um, they will bloat a little bit that, that will come very naturally so again with the um, red color with Windsor red or you could use basically any red which you have in your palette or for example you could choose orange color as the main color for lily that's also it's very common uh, lily color i just for some reason i wanted to paint something red today i feel inspired with some picture and that's why i came with this red color for lily but you could of course you could use orange color which is yes very well known that's uh, probably how many lilies around you look like i personally like very much white lilies but that's uh, the complete uh, <laughs> different story to paint white flowers and uh, one day we will certainly try it out one petal is ready by the way let's paint this right petal same principle we are watering the area and they go on the top of these previous two petals uh, let's say if we will be paint if we were painting <laughs> sorry my english uh, if we were painting um usual normal um lily i mean in normal technique uh close to botanical illustration we would not water these um, areas we would not make this overlapping because it would be hidden and top petals will cover uh, the bottom ones uh, but now we paint in in this very special very beautiful transparent technique and i hope you really really like it, it it's not that complicated as it might look and it's always so beautiful so feminine so 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 artistic right now i am just distributing the color and creating wines and I imagine that I'm just painting on the surface of the nipple or on the surface of the bowl. And it's nice to add some, some touches to some areas here. Uh, this will create some nice curves and folders on the petal. Very random. I did not plan any of these. That's how watercolor works. And we have our last petal to do. As you probably um actually no. Um right now I will paint this stem. This um it's not actually a stem um it's um the point where all the petals connects and um oh, <laughs> unfortunately i'm not that well know with some of flowers <laughs> words you could help me i'm very open to uh, to know more of vocabulary about flower structure so this is this part and in principle we are doing the same i just go along the edges with color to emphasize the edges to make them very contrast But what's important here, it will turn later in green. And I have a little bit of olive green. And just right now, I will 
start to add some green here green touches just here not so many not to make it very obvious and i mix them with red and again um lilies they have very certain folds here i will try just to show all these nice details <laughs> that was not necessary <laughs> i clean my brush i dry my brush and i just remove this unnecessary stroke uh, right now before we paint the last petal i would like to dry out and i will use a hair dryer so now the area is completely dry and the last thing we need to do is to very carefully i'm not pressing too much on the brush just very carefully very gentle water the area of the petal And let's make final touches. Um, these are red. I go very gentle on them, uh, on the uh, along the edges of the flower. Sometimes I press my brush a bit more to prepare this curvy feeling sometimes a bit less but more close you get to the middle of the flower the thicker your brush strokes could be like this for example i like it very much i like that we could see through the flower all the bottom areas i just want to smooth a little bit some areas here and I want to create these vines, central vine and the other vines. Always go along the shape of the petal. It's curvy and we need to imitate this curvy structure. I add some of color to the um, middle part of the petal for some contrast. It's time to add some contrast. Maybe in some points of the petal here. Now, before we finalize um, everything, I I'm not forgetting about small areas around. The, here will be a curve and as we paint a transparent flower, we could totally see how this curvy part goes under, under the flower. For example, if you look um, on the flower petals, on the bright sunshine, you could um you could see how it looks like and again and again and again and again same principle i watered the area and i went along the edges with bolder color Sometimes I need to drag out a little bit because here it is too obvious and I want to distribute the color a little bit here and emphasize a little bit this fold very carefully, just like this. I think it's uh, now time to change the bigger brush to a smaller brush. And 
and I would like to paint uh, similar the small curvy part here. I use very diluted red and I imagine that the flower edge grows just like this. And I paint this area. And because we paint on the top with very diluted color, it's already it's already looks pretty transparent. On my sketch I paint it a little bit longer. Yes, I think I I could actually do what I make on sketch. Like this. And um, let's have a look what um, could be improved. For example, I would like to make this area a little bit more crispy. That's why I just go on the top with red color, with my fine brush, just with the tip of the brush. I want to add some crispiness and more contrast because that really gives us this um, transparency feeling same here always keep in mind which area is on the top Right now, with a dry and clean brush, I just drag out some color to make uh, some lines not that obvious, uh, make them a little bit um, natural. Now the fun part comes. Um, uh, we paint the stamens. I would suggest to take some something orange for this. For example, I have permanent orange in my palette mm, in a pretty bold mixture. Stamens are relatively big. I did not pay, uh, draw them uh, in advance. Um, I hope I could manage, but let's see. So with Brave Move, I'm Paint some lines, one, two, three, four, five, oops, and six. And, um, Something darker would be nice. I will take Oxid, Oxid Red or Burnt Sienna will also be great. And I just uh, paint with some tipping, um, with some, with the tip, <laughs> I paint with the tip of the brush. I create these. Uh, fluffy, fluffy areas. Uh, nice if you use uh, some contrast, some dark, a darker brown. It will bring this lovely variety and natural feeling. And also with darker brown, I would like to emphasize these bottom parts of, of the stamens to add some shades. And also it helps us to, 
to keep this transparency feeling just like this some crispiness to some edges and I'm very happy with the result of our lily thank you so much for watching this video please let me know in comments which flower in transparent technique you would like to paint next i will try my best to record a video for you subscribe my channel and see you next time bye bye